Before we get into our actual practice exercises, I wanted to talk a little bit about our stays. So I don't actually teach a formal stay command. Uh, what I do is all of my stays are implied. And what that means is if I'm asking the dog to sit or to down, I want them to stay in that position until I release him. So I don't have to say stay. If I ask for a sit, he should just sit until I release him. And remember, our release words can either be yes, to a treat or to a toy, or break, which just means that he's done, but he shouldn't expect to get any big reward from it. The most important thing to understand if you want a really strong stay is we have to make sure that we're always releasing him from those stays. We're not allowing him to get up on his own. I don't want the dog to make a bunch of mistakes and keep popping up, keep popping up, keep popping up and getting confused and being uncertain about what that stay means um, and figuring out that if they just wait long enough, they can creep over to us or if we are not looking at them, then suddenly they're loose. It's really easy to make the mistake of telling our dog to do something and then forgetting that we asked them to do something or forgetting that we need to expect them to stay when we ask them to do something and then not noticing when they get up, you know, and not correcting that. So I want you to be very aware of when you ask him for any of his commands that you are then releasing him. It doesn't have to be super complicated. You can just sit, break, sit, break, right? And let him up before he makes the mistake and gets up on his own. He's been, he's been pretty good with his downstays. He's good with place. Um, he likes to sit. He prefers to flop down to down, which is fine. I don't really care if he lays down from a sit. That's not an issue for me, unless you plan on doing some kind of sport with him where that's gonna be something that loses you points. Um, but if you're just planning on taking him around, having him around the house, it, I don't really care if he lays down from a sit. That's not a big deal. What I don't want him to do is then get up and wander off or start crawling up to you when he's in the down. So when you're practicing, there's a few things that we can do to help make sure that our stays uh, remain very strong, or at least that he doesn't get confused. Um, or if we're in a new place and he's kind of distracted, he's having a hard time. I don't want to keep correcting and correcting and correcting. I would rather make sure that from the start, I'm trying to prevent him from making a mistake and getting up. We can correct, we'll go over that, but it's not what I want to do all the time when we're just practicing. So what I'll do, oh boy, is if I ask him to do a certain behavior, good boy, down. Good. Good. I want to make sure I'm telling him good and rewarding for those stays. Good. If he's struggling to be consistent with staying when he first goes home, which is sometimes the case, he's back in his old environment, he's very excited to see you, you know, you're new to practicing with him, he's new to hearing these things from you. What we can do to make sure that we are still building his stays um, in a different environment is good boy. I'll reward periodically for staying down. Good. I want to make sure I can stand fully back up and have him still stay. Nope. Damn. Good boy. If he doesn't, I'll tell him no, which means that he's not going to get any more treats. He needs to go back to doing what he was doing. Good, before I'm gonna reward him again. Yes. 